So now in this video we have a 555 timer here, kind of wired as a flip-flop, but it's different. Instead of giving a signal to one or the other uh, input, so we got a trigger up there and a reset down there. Instead, a reset is not going to do anything. We just have one button here and a capacitor. Right now the capacitor is charged uh, probably to 5 volts, even though it's not lining up to 5 volts perfectly there. The output is high. Red LED is lit up. When I press the button right there, you can see uh, in much less than a second right there. Um, when we look at the diagram, I wrote uh, five seconds, but I made that diagram a while ago. But in uh, any case, there you can see we press the button, capacitor discharges uh, really quickly, output is low, and it stays low. So we would kind of have to have switch bounce for uh, one press to make it where it would bounce uh, back. But uh, we have some time to uh, counter that uh, switch bounce because uh, once we're below two-thirds of the supply voltage, actually right now it's uh, above one-third of the supply voltage, as long as we stay above one-third of the supply voltage before I bump it again or it bounces, um, it's going to keep uh, going down. Once it's below one-third supply voltage, though, if you bump it again, and uh, there you can see that uh, you can switch it. Um, but it has to be up to about the two-thirds to one-third supply voltage. Otherwise, while it's making its way up, it's going to keep going no matter what until uh, that point. Um, but if you don't hit the button again and it doesn't bounce, it's going to keep going and lock into place. So now when it comes to the LEDs, we got the blue LED that lights up when the output is low because you can see that current path there. It connects the ground uh, pretty well, the any 555 timer that I'm using. When the output is high, so it actually doesn't make 5 volts, maybe 4 volts if we're lucky, the red LED lights up headed to ground right there. That's when the output is high for the NE555 timer. I do that a lot in a lot of videos. Uh, for some reason, I got the 1K resistor there. I think uh, because over to the side here, I see you have the same circuit, but with nine volts. Um, so in any case, um, then you would have needed a 1K resistor there uh, for nine volts, at least uh, 470. But in uh, any case, uh, that's what we got there. I use that uh, setup in a lot of videos. So we're just gonna kind of rush through that. Pin four here, so for a flip-flop, usually uh, pin four has a switch attached to it, but we don't have that set up in this circuit. We just have one button instead of two. Usually there's a switch to pin two and a switch to pin four. And uh, so we don't want pin four to do anything. We put it directly to the positive supply right there. Pin four is waiting for a low enough voltage. I think it's less than half of the supply voltage. Uh, if there's that low voltage to it, it will set the output low and hold it low for as low long as you have the uh, low signal to pin four, or even longer if you don't try to switch it afterwards. In any case, uh, setting to the positive supply tells it to do nothing. Now, when it comes to the actual circuit right here, so pin two and pin six can change the output. And when you see the output change, that's actually the voltage that they see right there. But uh, to begin with, so this is all one node, except for where that jumps. That's not a connection right there. This is all uh, connected. Uh, pin two waits for uh, one third of the supply voltage or less, then it sets the output high. Pin two is waiting for two thirds of the supply voltage or more, and then it sets the output low. And uh, so in between those, uh, that voltage range there, between one third and uh, two thirds supply voltage, it doesn't do anything. So uh, to do that, I just have a 10K resistor going to the negative supply there and a 10K resistor over here, remember that jumps over, going to the positive supply. So we got about uh, 2.5 uh, volts out of five being held at those two pins until we close this switch. Hopefully that makes sense. So now, um, when we start off, uh, the capacitor has to charge. So um, I think the output will be high to begin with. I, I could be wrong. Um, but in uh, any case, when I don't uh, press the switch, the capacitor will charge. And, uh, but uh, in any case, well, it's charging, the output is high. That's the main takeaway. So it can go through those two resistors and it just uh, charges. So when we close the switch though, as you saw before, when it was up at uh, five volts, um, it should have been five volts, even though it looked a little low. I don't think it's lining it up uh, completely with the line, but it was about five volts. We close the switch. Now pin six will see five volts, which is above two thirds of supply voltage. So it sets the output low. When the output goes low, so does pin seven. It connects to ground right there. So we press the button and uh, release it uh, right away. Or, or you could even hold it. Um, but in uh, any case, we want to release it right away. If you don't uh, release it, this is just going to discharge 
to probably about half of the supply voltage or something like that. Um, but in any case, it won't discharge low enough to set off pin 2 until we open this. Then it can just keep discharging until it discharges completely. Hopefully that makes sense. But in any case, uh, this gets to 0 volts. Doesn't matter. Pin 2 is still held at 2.5 volts. So it's not doing anything until we close the switch. Then pin 2 will see instantly that uh, we're at 0 volts. Less than 1 third supply voltage. Then it sets the output high, as close to 5 volts as it can. This stops discharging. And uh, so if we keep holding this, though, we got that voltage divider, which should keep it from uh, charging to 2 thirds supply voltage. But uh, when we release it now, it can just keep charging until it gets to the full supply voltage. And now I found out I was wrong. So if I get a good enough press on it, we uh, can change it there. I thought that if I hold it down, it will stay into a place either way. But there you can see, if I hold it too long, the blue LED jumps off uh, quickly. It goes to the red, but we can uh, lock it into red place. So that was switch bounce uh, right there. But in any case, if it's being held uh, long enough, it will not stay on blue. Uh, but if uh, we press it and hold it, it will stay on red unless we got the uh, switch bounce to move it again. So you do have to press it quick.